as the word of God comes your way today. And we believe God, the communion service, it is the meal that heals. The communion service is going to also be a blessing to us. It's going to take out everything that is not of God in our lives. Let's worship the Lord. Father, we thank you. Glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Lord. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Emmanuel, 
Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Oh, let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. I will glorify Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. I will glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Oh, Jesus. Let us glorify Jesus. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, Emmanuel. Let, Let us glorify Emmanuel. Thank you, my Father. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. In Luke chapter 2, we we'll read from verse Luke chapter 2 from verse 41 to 48. Luke chapter 2, 41 to 48. Luke 2, 41 to 48. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast and when they had fulfilled the days as they had as they returned the child jesus tarried in jerusalem and jesus joseph and his mother knew not of it but they were supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among the king's folk and acquaintance and they found him not and Turned, and they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Where, and it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother and said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. I want to share what I call costly assumption. Expensive mistake. A mistake that is very expensive. Costly assumption. Costly assumption. Costly assumption. Costly assumption. An assumption that is very, very costly. That is important that we understand. You know, one of the things that would happen to us is to think we're on the right track only to find out that we made a mistake being, you know, meeting ourselves on the wrong track. The place where we read, Jesus and his mother and father went to Jerusalem every year, every year, every year, for a feast called the Feast of Passover. And we know the story. They went one time and um, they, they returned back without Christ. After they got far, they discovered that he was not in the company. He was not with them in the journey. They went back to go seek for him. So what is our lesson? Costly assumption. They thought he was with them, not knowing he had left them. They thought he was with them, not knowing he had left them. It could be very costly to make an assumption that you still have God with you, not knowing you've strayed away from him. In Judges chapter 16, if you read verse 20, the Bible says concerning Samson, he said, I would arise. And shake myself as at other times he wist not that the spirit had departed from him Paul was talking to us in first Corinthians 11 28 I think he said let every man examine himself let every man examine himself you need to examine yourself because sometimes we miss God without even knowing we miss God if the mother of Jesus the biological mother of Jesus 
as it were, the biological father of Jesus, could miss him. We are not related to Jesus by birth or by nativity. It's important that we understand and begin to study all the steps. What went wrong? How did they miss it? Everyone you see what the Bible says in Matthew 7, 20, 21, that many shall say in your name, we did this, in your name, we did that. And I will say to them, I never knew you. Um, depart from me, you work out of iniquity. They started well. They did all that in his name. They were not diabolical. You know, they didn't stray out of his word. But there was something that happened along the line. And they lost connection with him. No wonder Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, he said, examine yourself whether you still be in the faith. He wasn't talking to all believers. He was talking to believers. Examine yourself. Give me the amplified version. The amplified version. The amplified. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding on to the faith, showing the proper proofs, fruits. Give me the message. Give me the message Bible. Test yourself. To make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. It's very important. There's a spirit in the end time. It's called the spirit of it doesn't matter. And like I tell people, in it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. In it doesn't matter, there are a dozen matters. You must understand that many people, when, when Peter was confronted after they had prayed for the man that was impotent, when he was confronted with the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin, in chapter 4 of Acts, verse 9, he said, let's examine ourselves concerning this impotent man. Let's examine. Let's examine ourselves. Is this deed we have done, is it good or bad? So it's very important that self-examination becomes a, a daily, daily, constant, you know, activity of a believer. That you keep examining yourself. Because they missed him. So how come they made this costly assumption? Starting a journey with him. Starting a trip with him. Starting you know, a movement with him. And along the line they missed him. Many started well. Most people today who are living in error started well. Most preachers you see. Most believers you see. Who are heretical. Who are talking, um, speaking, you know. Fables and all of that started well. Most people who deviated started well. People start well. But along the line, they made a very costly assumption. It was an assumption. They assumed it was still with them. They assumed, you know, there are people that don't commit, they don't lie. They don't commit uh, 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 immorality. They don't commit uh, 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 evil thoughts of the mind. They don't commit any form of sin that they think they know. So, as far as they're concerned, what, what, what have I done? I don't live in all these known sins. But there are instructions from God they refuse to obey. There are assignments from God they refuse to adhere to. There are warnings from God they refuse to take it to. So at the end of the day, that alone can become an assumption. Thinking you are still with him, but not knowing you have deviated from him. Not knowing God is no more with you. Some people who lived in error lived in error unknowingly. What will make a man like Korah, Datan, and Abiram to challenge Moses? In Numbers chapter 16, from verse 1 to verse 30. What made them challenge Moses? They felt they were right. The Bible called them men of renown. He said they were men of renown. They were also being used by God to minister to the camp. They had a level of influence. As far as they were concerned, they were being logical over what Moses was doing. What do you think will make somebody like Miriam in Numbers chapter 12 from verse 1 to 10? What do you think made someone like Miriam and Aaron to challenge Moses? As far as they were concerned, they were logical. Why will Moses marry an Ethiopian woman? This is not what God commanded. You see, it's very important that you are careful. That in trying to work for God, in trying to move with God, you don't miss God. And you will live with the assumption that you know him. So if you begin to study all they did, we see the Bible says they went there every year. Verse 41. Every year. Every year, every year, every year. There is every tendency that when you do something every time, you lose value. They saw it as a feast. Why people, people make costly assumptions? Because they see the work of God, the assignment of God as a usual occurrence. Until you learn to place demand. If you are carrying your Bible, you are going to church, you are placing demand. You are not going there to become casual with your friends. You are not going there to be, to be greeting people. You are placing demand on the things of God. You place value on the things of God. They saw it as a feast. They saw it as merriment. It's good. Prosperity is good. Wealth is good. But sometimes we need sober reflection. Because we can be so carried away in the midst of merriment and abundance and we miss God. Carried away in the midst of merriment and abundance and we make an assumption. Meanwhile, God leaves us. It's important. 
every year they went they saw it as a feast so when you are moving with god and you do not place a demand look at the man in mark chapter 5 the woman who had the issue of blood the bible says jesus heard about a man called jairus jairus had a daughter that was 12 years old this jairus compelled christ say come lay hands on my daughter that she'll be healed on the way making that trip a woman who had an affliction for 12 years the anointing on christ was an anointing at that time because whether you understand it or not there are anointings for the season the anointing at that time was to minister to a 12-year challenge the child was 12 years old but the affliction of the woman was equally 12 years old the woman was sensitive say if i can touch there were many around christ like i said to people there are four kinds of people that were around christ that day there are some people who were touching christ because others were touching not because they wanted to touch oh have you touched okay let me also touch they touched just to fulfill the number there was a second group of people that touched christ because they needed to feel the material he was wearing let's know the texture of this material there's a third group of people that touch Christ not because they want to touch him. As they were pushing themselves, somebody pushed them and their body touched Christ and they quickly moved backwards. There's a the fourth group of people who touched with, the, with a sincerity of purpose and that woman was the only one. If I can. You have to place demand. Casual Christians become Christian casualties. Casual Christians soon become Christian casualties. Casual Christians soon become praise. You are casual. I don't know how people can be praising God and they are looking at, around. People are worshipping God. And I, you, sometimes you see the person leading worship. He's worshipping and just moving about. Their, their heart is not in what they are doing. Time for praise and worship. There are some brethren that will sit down. And they are praising God on their seats. We are so casual. But we feel it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I sit, whether I stand. You don't do that when the president walks in. You don't walk into the president's office holding your phone. We are too casual. We miss God. We are too casual. How can somebody be praying and you are replying SMS? Please call me later. You are, you are speaking in tongue. Call me back. I am praying. You are playing. You are not praying. You are playing. You are not praying. We are too casual. We are too casual. They saw it as a feast. Whenever you become too casual, you will make a costly assumption and God will leave you. Look, at, can I surprise you? Samson never slept with Delilah. Never. Samson slept with other women, but not Delilah. Bible says he met others. He went into her. He went into her. He went, but Delilah, Bible says he, he loved if the woman of the valley of Sorek. He never. They were having a conversation. 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 Because he began to toy with sin. And when you toy with God, it makes you a toy. When you keep toiling with God, soon it will make you a toy. You can't be casual with the things of God. You cannot be casual. You are walking to church. I, I, I have a problem. With people who walk to church, no, no pen, no note, they don't take anything. They just walk in there, they sit down, just with their phone, there's time for the message, you open their phone, the pastor says something, they engraft a few things, some don't even jot, up. it's fine when somebody has, has his iPad to jot a few things and some things the pastor said, some people are into high tech and all that, that's okay, but some don't even do that at all. How will you grow? How will you grow? How will you grow? Costly assumption. People become so casual. So casual in the relationship with God. So casual in the things of God. So we must understand that this, the mother of Christ and the biological father, um, parents of Christ saw it as a feast. And we are going there next year again. We are going, that's how what happened when they went to Shiloh. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, they were going to Shiloh casually. Shiloh was just, oh, Shiloh. Yeah. Until Hannah said, No! I'm placing a demand on the anointing. That woman said, if I can touch. The Bible says, as soon as she said that, as she touched, he said, a flow of blood stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched? Who placed a demand on this anointing? Who touched me? Who placed a demand on this oil that is on me? Took it. The child died. That was why when Jesus entered into where the child was laid, he had to push everybody out. He had to commune with the spirits and turn the anointing that was on him from healing to resurrection. He had to turn the anointing from the anointing of healing to resurrection and brought the child back. Because as soon as that woman was healed, the child died. Somebody had taken the unction that was meant for the child. Why? She placed demand. And that's why I beg people all the time, never be too close to your pastor. 
Never be too close to your pastor. Don't call your pastor every minute. Never be too close to your pastor. Never be too close to the close to the prophet. And you're like, oh, pa Papa, you saying I should not talk to my pastor? Talk to him. But please, if you're not careful, you are human. Very soon you get so familiar. Because you're getting close to him, you start seeing the things that you're not supposed to see. And the enemy begins to amplify some things that have just natural. The devil begins to give you ideas and suggestions, and you start dying in pain. You see yourself meeting prophets that are not even close to the prophets over your life in grace. And they start swiddling, swiddling you. They start swiddling you. Now you are now paying for your rights. You are now paying for something that you have in your ministry, in your church. How would you get what I'm saying? Place the man. That's your pastor. At the end of the service, go on your knees. Stop it. You are not colleagues. Go on your knees. Say, put your hand on my head. Speak a word over me. Let anybody call you a fool. They that are wise, how far has their wisdom led them? He said, remove not the ancient landmark which our father has set up. Remove not the ancient land landmark which our father. If you are too passive you can't perceive and if you are too passive you soon pass out you know what that woman said in the book of second kings chapter 4 when elijah kept going in and out through that city he said i perceive that this is a holy man of god others were casual she built a tabernacle built a house elijah lodged there elijah had contact he even told the woman he said do you want me to talk to you talk to the leaders of this town for you the woman said no i dwell amongst my own people Second Kings 4 verse 9, I perceive that this man is only pass it, pass it. passing by us. He's passing. He never knocked on their door. He was just passing by, but she believed. Please don't be casual when it comes to the things of God. As a youth, I, used, I, I was pastored by Ben Sinidahosa, the late Archbishop Ben Sinidahosa. I used to have a friend, whenever we go to church, we don't sit together so that we don't talk. I will tell him, okay, he say, after this, after benediction, I'll be standing here. This year I'll be standing. Sometimes I'll tell you, he'll tell me, I'll be at the bookshop, I'll be waiting for you there so we can walk home. We don't sit together. We sit, so we don't want to discuss. Once we are sitting, sitting in church, our attention. Look, do you know what Elijah, Elijah said to Elisha? If you see me go, if you see me disappear, in other words, I'm not going to give you a prayer notice. If you see me disappear, in other words, unction demands total attention. Unction, total unction demands total attention if you want unction then you need to pay attention they saw it as a feast it becomes a costly assumption when we become too casual over the things of god even some people who are leaders in church some who are pastors some who are heads of the department they are so casual when they are preaching them going about well, let's talk to god let's tell the lord you know we are going to tell god now we are going to tell god them um, you are so casual and i don't know how people do that I don't know how people do that. Number two. Number two. The Bible says in verse 44, supposing him to be in the company. Supposing him to be in the company. They assume. Number two reason why people make costly assumptions is when they make people their standard. The reason they missed Christ, the reason they made such assumption is that they thought Christ was with other people it was with the company of people that traveled with them most time we make mistakes in life in our work with god when we start using people as our standard thinking because they did something god approved it supposing him to be in the company because they did this and they did that it means they are right sir listen a bishop an apostle me me an apostle a prophet and then, eh, we all can make mistakes we are not your standard you only follow us when we follow christ when we don't follow christ don't follow us don't 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 supposing him to be in the company supposing him supposing him to be in the company you need a personal revelation for destiny actualization you need personal revelation for destiny actualization personal only when they follow God look at what Paul said in 1st Corinthians 11 1 Follow me as I follow Christ. Be you followers of me as I'm following. So if I don't follow Christ, bring the message and the amplified. Let's see if they say something more explicit. 
It pleases me that you continue to, continue to remember and honor me by keeping up the traditions of faith that I taught you. All actual authority stems from Christ. Give me the Amplified. Pattern yourself after me. Follow, oh Lord. Pattern yourself after me. Follow my example as I imitate and follow Christ the Messiah. Ephesians 5.1 says, be followers of God. Only when they follow God. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. Not only faith. If anybody tells you, oh, have faith by this time, tomorrow this shall happen. Sir, you wait till tomorrow some things will not happen. Mix your faith with patience. The God we serve is not a quick fix God. Drop $10,000 and in two days get $1 million. God is not MMM. God is not a money doubler. God is not a magician. No, sir. You may sow seeds. And it may take you a year to harvest it. That's the truth. Don't give because you want to return. Give because you love God. Don't give because you want, yo, uh, you can't pay your rent, so you are dropping this last seed. And that's why people get frustrated. That's why they feel swindled. And now, I had a pastor who, who told me to give. I never felt he swindled me because he never told me if I give by this time tomorrow I'll have money. No. He told me give because the church needs it. Give because there's a pro And that's why I tell them in our church, we have a ministry. Ask anybody. I've never come out to say, we need people that, I'll tell them, we have a project, we have something going on. Let God use you. I hardly do that. But when I do that, I don't tie it to anything. You can tie it to something if you want to. But I'm not going to tell you, come out and give now so that in three days, Central Bank will come to your house. As you drop this money in three days, oh, they will open it. If Central Bank comes to your house, won't you, won't you run away? So in three days, in fact, let me tell you, I see something. I see something. As you drop this money now, hmm, as you drop this money now, you have to drop it because in the next 48 hours, there will be 48 miracles that will happen to you in 48 ways. That's a rhyme. That's not a prophecy. That's a rhyme. That's not a prophecy. It's just a rhyme. Be careful. Love God. Don't let your pastor tell you to give. Go to the church. They are building. Call him and give. Call him. Sir, I'll take care of this. I'll take care of that. Sometimes some people who are wicked push and move or their lifestyle, their attitude is what moves their pastors or their leaders into doing what they do. Don't be wicked. Somebody said to me, say, oh, look at Islam. Islam, they don't take offerings. I say, oh, because they know what to do. Let a mosque be destroyed today. One person will be the bigger one. They use initiative. They use initiative. They don't, you don't tell them. They will do it. They will be the better one. But Christian, let some people, the pastor will quote all scriptures. He will give an example. There was one young boy that brought five loaves and two fishes. As he gave, oh, that fish was his only lunch. Was his lunch. Was his lunch. As he gave, cry. He has to quote all scriptures. If you see a believer who has the money, he's looking. He said, I'm not still convinced. Quote another one. The man quotes again, quotes again. He said, mm, 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 I'm not convinced. Quote another one. He, and that's why I'm praying that God will make you, hearing the sound of my voice, a kingdom treasurer. That before you, before anybody starts talking, oh, Barakasheya, before anyone starts, and that's what I told God years ago, Lord, bless me and see. I said, Lord, just bless me and see. That, that's all. Bless me and just see. I will, I will bring honor to you. I will be a blessing to life. God is going to surprise you. You are going to become a kingdom treasurer. You are going to become so blessed that I see you sponsoring crusades. I see you taking care of orphans, taking care of widows. I see you closing the mouth of lion with kingdom finances, like Joseph of Arimathea. I see you preserving the body of Christ. I see you preserving the church of God. I see God blessing you to such a point that you will look for widows to take care of. You will put widows on salary. I see you building churches. I see you putting true men of God on television. I see God using you to expand his work. You will not struggle. God is going to take you to that realm and to that level in life where you become a kingdom financier, a kingdom treasurer. Please understand it. This is your standard. Anything that is not here is not real. Anything that is not in this word of God is not real. Somebody asked me a question. He said, 
when we started our ministry, he said to me, ah, stickers and this. I said, until I see them from the word of God, I'm not going to do them. Until I saw them in Deuteronomy, bind them in thy house, bind them on thy doorpost. I said, ah, okay. That's, it took me time before I allowed stickers. I said, I need the word of God to instruct me. There are things I've not seen in the Bible that are done by many people. I said, until I see it in the Bible, until I see it in the word of God, until I see it in scriptures, I'm not going to do it. I will not adopt it. I won't do it because it sounds good. I won't do it because it will bring a crowd. I know, I know the kind of things that happen and the whole place will be jammed. But it's not scriptural. At the end of the day, I'm going to give account of this nonsense that I'm doing. Those who are doing it may have seen it in the scripture. I have not seen it. If I see it, I will do it. So they have seen it. I have not seen it. I'm still searching. So I'm not going to do what I have not seen because somebody is doing it and the person has a massive crowd. Three things that don't determine the success of a minister. A, B, C. Attendance, building, cash. A, B, C. Attendance, building, and cash. Big attendance, big building, too much money. It doesn't define how great you are before God. They say, who is the greatest in the kingdom? He brought a child. A child has no cares. A child has no worries. A child doesn't even bother about anything. Jesus said, this is the greatest. I don't want to be the greatest before men. Father, if crowd will take me to hell, take the crowd. If miracles happening in my ministry will deceive me, take the miracle. If healing happening through me will deceive me, prophecies happening through me will deceive me, take the prophecy. But the only thing you should not take from me is the Holy Spirit. I do not want that to become the yardstick for, for ministerial growth and measurement. Then I get to heaven and they say, you, get out. I don't... How are you going to feel you died before and you get to heaven? God said, I don't know. You will die again. You just die again. You will die again. That the same man who you have professed. I asked, I asked the pastor. I said, just imagine the trumpet sound that you, are, you stay back. You are your drummer. Others are gone. Only you are your drummer. You now stay back. You say, pastor, you didn't go. He said, I didn't go. No, just imagine the shame. You now start preaching to your drummer. He said, let's follow second batch. Let's follow second batch. We miss, we miss first batch. Let's follow second. No, I, I, I prepared the scenario. The trumpet sounds, your keyboard is around. Your drummer is around. And it becomes more terrible when your assistant pastor and you, both of you stay behind. And you are looking at yourself. You know, you are looking, say, ah, say daddy, you didn't go. Say, ah, I don't know. There's nothing you can explain. It's plain. And I beg God all the time. I say, Father, please. And that's why the kind of preaching I preach is the way I, I preach the way I preach. Because it's very important. Our ministry is growing. Life is growing. Technology everywhere. This is the time if people are not careful to make an assumption and God will walk away from their life. Nobody's your standard. That's why Mordecai, everybody, do you know when, <laughs> when the king gave the instruction concerning Daniel that nobody should pray. Others did not pray, but Daniel opened the windows. That others did it doesn't make it right. People can, everyone can be wrong. Great men can make mistakes. Mordecai said everybody will bow, but in the law of the Jews, he said, thou shalt bow down to no other grieving image. So I'm putting my head on it. Hey man, I'm not bowing down to you. The three Hebrew boys, others bow down to that graven image that Nebuchadnezzar set up. But the three Hebrew boys refused. Don't lie because others are lying. Nobody's your standard. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because others are doing it, don't do it. It becomes a costly assumption when number one, we be, take the things of God with levity, lethargy, lackadaisical approach to the things of God. Come casual. Number two becomes a costly assumption when we see people as our stand. Number three, Christ sat with them asking and answering questions. What was that? Acquiring knowledge. When you despise knowledge, number three, you despise knowledge. The value of a Christian or a believer is your knowledge bank. That is why I tell people, I say Sunday service is good, but please sit down for Bible study. Sit down for teachings. 
Sunday service is celebration, noise, announcement, miracle, healing, we scream, with but we sit like this, or you sit in church, and you Bible study has even more value to a Christian than a Sunday service. Knowledge. Sit down. I love the Athen Christians. In the time in Athens, when Paul came, the reason Paul penetrated them was because in Acts chapter 17, verse 21, he said in those days, everybody in Athens always sat down to hear or listen to something new. For all the Athenians and strangers which we are there, spend their time in nothing else but to either tell or hear something new. Growing up as a believer, I miss those days where we sit down, it's new revelation. In fact, we go to scriptures looking for revelations. Looking for Abo Shatter, for revelations. What is your knowledge bank? How much scriptures do you know? How much scriptures do you know? How much scriptures? Do you know? How much of God's word do you know? First Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. That I wish that all men be saved. And after salvation, what is the next thing? To come to the knowledge of the truth. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3. He said the ox knows his master, the ass knows his owner. But my people have not known me. Animals know their owner. But my people don't know me. When Jesus was communicating with the woman by the well in John 4 22. He said you know not, you know not what you worship. But we know what we worship. In Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22, he said, these people are foolish. They have not known me. It's important. Isaiah 33, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6. Important. Wisdom, knowledge shall be the stability of the time, the strength of thy salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. A man who has wisdom and has knowledge, no matter the shaking, is stable. Stability. Knowledge. Pursue Knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Know God. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, such as do wickedness against the covenant, shall he corrupt with flatteries, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploit. What do you know? Is it your level of exploit is directly proportional to your level of knowledge. Your level of exploit as a believer is directly proportional to your level of knowledge. Psalm chapter 82 from verse 5 to verse 7. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, and the foundations of the earth are out of course. For I have said, ye are gods, and all ye are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Because you don't know that you are gods. You have not received scripture because your God status is, 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 is a function of the revelation. John chapter 10 verse 35. If you call them gods unto whom the word of God came, for the scripture cannot be broken. My wife is there. My kids are there. 90% of my time is with the Bible. When they walk into any time, they see me. If I'm not praying for people, I'm not replying messages, I'm not talking to people, I'm not giving instructions, I'm studying the word of God. And I said it, if you're up to one year, which are six months in the faith, and you have not gone through the Bible once, I wonder what the problem is. Not just going through the Bible, but reading it in spirit and in truth. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Pursue sitting in the midst of doctors that tells you that for you to acquire knowledge, you must move with people of like minds. Move with people of like minds, people that pursue knowledge. You are a believer, but your level of impact is minimal. Proverbs 11 9. True knowledge shall the just is just, but true knowledge. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. You hear what the Bible says? That is so be without knowledge. It is not good. Knowledge is important. Christ sat down and he began to discuss with them asking and answering questions we make that assumption we miss him 
Today, believers can sit down sending videos to each other. Videos of protests. Videos of protesters. Videos of people killing each other. Videos of that. This From Monday till night, that's what they are exchanging. Videos of this. They are not extending scriptures. They are not extending revelations. A short clip of a minister of God. They don't send to themselves. A two minutes message. A one minute encouragement. Two minutes encouragement by the end time. Message that will keep them conscious. Mess what will inspire them. No. They will send protests. We said it now. We said it. We said it. This one, you see? They killed this one. They killed him. Am I saying don't speak? Speak out. But that should not take your whole time. You are deviating. You are deviating. You send this video. You send that video. You send that one. You're going to tell them to stop it. Tell them to stop it. Send me scriptures. Send me messages. Build my spirit. If you are doing business, let them send you things that relate to your profession. If you are doing anything, let them send you things that relate to your profession. Not things that you have no knowledge of. Somebody sends you a video of uh, 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 somebody who fell from somewhere and broke the leg. Okay, what, was it, what, was it, what, what did you learn? How to break legs? So I don't understand what people... Somebody sends you a video of somebody they stabbed. Can you imagine? They stabbed him and he died. Is that good news? I tell people all the time, I say, come, I'm going to allow this happen because you don't know me. Don't send this again. I got involved in some group, group chat of some few pastors, about 10, 15 of them. And I was, I was quiet, I was silent, and they were you know, sending something. It was nice, I was just learning some new things. The next day I saw a video. I saw another video. I saw a third video. And I said, please, take me out of this. She was saying, no, take me out. This has become a group of fear. How they burned down one place, how they bearded one person, how they killed one. I said, I can't watch it. Don't forget what the Bible says. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things have good report. If there be any virtue, think on these things. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues. Proverbs 4.23. Issues. Guard your heart. Most of those nonsense you see in the dream are the product of the business of the day. All the nonsense videos. Please stop it. Terror. War. The word whatsoever is very big. Is there an agenda to bring vaccination? Is there an agenda of 5G? Is there whatever it is? The reason we don't bother ourselves is about is that when we pray and say whatsoever, it captures 5G. It captures the vaccine. It captures whatever intention they have. That whatsoever is not of God. Whatsoever, we don't care to know whatever they are doing or they are not doing. Whatsoever it is, we go on our knees to say we shatter them. There can be conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. There can be lies. There can be true. There can be. But one thing that is solid and stable is what we say to the Lord in the place of prayer. That we don't care who they are. Whether it's the WHO, whether it's this, whether it's that. We don't care. We are saying if it's against us, if it will not do us well, if it will you know, take our faith in Christ, if it's going to be towards the one world religion, we frustrate. Number four. People make costly assumptions. You know what Christ said? Should I not be about my father's business? They are not about it. People make costly assumptions when they lack assignment mentality. Mentality of an assignment. Everyone that is a believer has an assignment. What is your assignment? It's so funny that people think that they must, once they, 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 are, they come, they can become, they have to become leaders or preachers. No. You can be a very good usher. That is your assignment. You can be a protocol in church. You can be a choir member. You are so addicted to that assignment. You didn't join a group. You picked up an assignment. When you see people say, I'm leaving the choir. I'm leaving the prayer band. It's because you felt you joined a group. You didn't join a group. You picked up an assignment. Stop feeling it was a group you joined. You didn't join the church. God added you. He said, and the Lord added such that should be saved. You didn't join. Don't do things and feel that I, I'll just stop. No, you don't stop. You are into the technical department in your church. It, it is your assignment to make sure that the sound in the church is solid. Heaven will bless you for that. Heaven will honor you for that. It's your assignment. Christ says, should I not be about my father? I came here for an, I have an assignment. I didn't come casual. 
I came to talk to these men so I can broaden and shape in my assignment. Have an assignment mentality. Stop feeling you are doing your church a service. Stop feeling you are doing God a service. You are not doing God. You are helping your life. They say, come, come to church to pray. You say, uh, 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 they make, make me angry. I, I, I won't go to church. You know, I hear people say because somebody offended them in the church. Quite, please, that's nonsense. Oh, someone offended you in the church, so you stopped. An usher made you angry, stopped. Pastor, you are just rude and arrogant. Somebody offended you where you work. Why didn't you resign? Somebody provoked you in the office. Why didn't you leave the job? You have a co tenant that gets you angry. Why have you not packed out? You are just plain arrogant. You are plain arrogant. You are stubborn. This is the house of God. Someone is making you leave your father's house. My friend, go back to that church. Go and serve God. Go and serve God. He said, I got angry. You are just rude. You got close to the pastor and you lost regard for him. That's what happened. You got close to leadership and you lost regard. You are just plain rude. It's not a decision. You were added to the church. You were added to the family. Assignment is our duty to make sure we protect our own, protect our leaders. I asked somebody a question. As a man of God does something wrong, which we know is wrong, you put it out there. A spiritual father, you put it out there. I asked me a question. Your father, I know your father, is a drunkard. I said, why did you post it on Facebook? Your biological father, I know him, is a drunkard. Post it on Facebook. He said, I know. I said, oh. But your spiritual father, you can, you can do that. Your bar, why don't you post it and let people comment? Ah, say, this is my father. He's a drunkard. So that we can all comment and say, ah, look at the bottle, it's big. Look at the drink, it's green. No. I say, your mom is this and that. Go and post it. Put it on the internet. But we can do that to our leaders. We can kill our leaders. It's assignment to see. Because Christ is going to ask you questions. And you don't know your pastor is going to give account of, of you. The way you behave. On that day, God, God will say, I brought this man to you. How did you treat him? He said, Father, this man almost killed me. Hebrews 13, 17. This man almost killed me. He said, Obey them that have rule over you. Submit yourself. For they watch for your souls. As they must give account that they may do it with joy, not with grief. For it is unprofitable for you. Bring the message on the Amplified. Be responsive to your pastoral leaders. Listen to their counsel. They are alert to the condition of your life. And work under strict supervision of God. Contribute to the joy of their leadership. Prayer band leader. Choir master. Everybody's getting pregnant. Choir master. The choir is empty. You are going about. Rather than teaching people so low and tender, you are giving all of them fruit of the womb. God said the pastor is grief. God will hold you responsible. Assistant pastor. Head of department. I'm talking to Christians. We are so, we are so, you just, a, 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 a meeting has ended, you sit down, you are doing your own meeting. Condemning everything that has been said. Even if you don't fear God, don't you fear Satan? Even if you don't feel God can kill you, don't you feel Satan can ruin you? Be responsive. Give me the amplified. Now, I'm, I'm sorry today if I'm loose and maybe I'm just hitting some people very hard. It's more like I'm doing a, a workers' training or a conference. That's how the Holy Spirit wants it. Obey your spiritual leaders. Every leader in ministry or whatever should read Hebrews 13, 17 to their followers. Always read it to them. Obey your leaders and so, your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. Is, is, is my pastor my father? Is he feeding me? Is he feeding me? Is he, is he so, 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 why, 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 why? Is he feeding me? For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls, guarding your spiritual warfare as men who we have to render account of their trust. Listen to this do your part. So let them do this with gladness, not sighing and groaning. That will not be profitable for you. I'm speaking to somebody who has walked out of a church. 
You now sit at home. Go back. I'm speaking to that young man who now feels that him, himself and his wife can do service in the house because their pastor rebuked them. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. There are lots of things. You, where you are going is so far. Don't ruin it. Your destiny is so glorious. Don't allow emotions, anger, pride. They removed you as a leader. And they predicted you would leave. And you left. They made you, they made you, you know, a, a regular member of a department. You were the head of the department. After three years, you were done with your tenure. They said, sit down. You can't sit down because once you were, you were a boss. Once a boss, always a boss. So you cannot sit under anybody. You left. The Lord will help you. That you do not make costly assumptions. Thinking God is with you and he has left you. The Bible said they had to trace themselves. Three days went back. Some of us need to go back. Stop covering. Go back. Go back. You have become so casual. In the past, you wake up two o'clock to, two, two to pray. Three. Now, you don't bother pray. You You sleep till morning. You sleep till five. Sleep till six. Because you have been told that demons don't pray 3 a.m. It's figment of imagination. We're not waking up at night to pray because of demons. We are following the pattern of Christ. Luke 6, 12. All night. Which is why Christ was always praying at night. He withdrew all night to pray. He withdrew all night to pray. And it came to pass, Luke 6, 12, in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continue all night in prayer to God. We are following the pattern of our, of our master. It has nothing to do with demons or witches. When I wake up to pray, I don't spend more than five minutes addressing kingdoms and marino. I don't spend more than five minutes dismantling their kingdom. I don't spend that five minutes doing that. I focus on spiritual growth. I focus on praying for those committed to my life. I focus on praying for those who are members of our ministry. I focus on praying for the women, the men, the children, the youths, the teenagers, the workforce, our pastors, their family. We have the sons of the prophets. I pray for them. I pray for their family. I pray for their health. I pray for their work. I pray for pastors all over the world. I pray for people. Not spending my whole time praying for demons. It doesn't take a minute or two minutes, you're done with that. But you draw strength, you can intercede those times. God will help you. I'll be back in one minute for the communion. I'll be back to pray with you if you believe God for healing in your body. Don't go away. Stay glued. One minute, we'll be back. God bless you.
Welcome back. I believe the word of God is impacting your life and you are becoming a better Christian. That's my assignment. The Lord said to me, restore people to their destiny. Number one, through the revelation of the word. Number two, through the manifestation of power. Number three, through the reality of the Holy Spirit. My ministry, you know, is, is these three fold.